Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Taking three movie thoughts. Now, right at the start of the movie, so Brian left the door open, Lenore says. That really does not at all sound like Brian. Like, I could have believed that he already somehow gave her a key, you know, somehow realizing that she might come by and... But he left the door open. That just and and then later we find out that he left his cell phone out and and Stuart went up and just used. <laughs> yeah, that's. Yeah, I mean, even the most trained spy badass cannot you know, beat the could you get me a cup of coffee trick. That is just and this is Stuart too. The the you know when when things start going wrong all he can think of to say is shut up, shut up. Just Dude, Brian, you need you are just you are terribly out of shape in this movie. Seriously. I love how when when he's on the phone with Kim and explaining the situation, the, the first phone call there, he he says she was snatched. Lenore was snatched, not taken, because Neeson, you know, asked. You know, he he stipulated he will only do this one if no one is taken. So you know, I I just. I feel like they were they were going through the script. Okay, fine. Oh, just taken, snatched. Does Guy Ritchie get like royalties for for when that term is is used and you know used for not the body part when the I guess the the bit where Brian lets himself get captured, you know, just kind of you know, expect that kind of you know. The, okay, so he copies down, you know, database stuff. It seemed like a bit of a an interesting situation that he then had to get himself out of. Not to mention that. I'm not sure he really caused some of the stuff that really helps him escape, such as the the you know the what's it called the the cargo thingy flying off that truck. It's like just it's it's straight out of the you know what's it Final Destination Two with that truck with lumber. It's just insane and it smashes several cars and that right there you just I'm still watching Taken aren't I why are why are cars being smushed in in a Taken movie and just yeah it yeah and the and then you know there's the bit where they think that he died in the in the car and then he got out in time and just yeah I I've, I've seen this stuff before in in action movies didn't expect to see it in the Taken movie and I love when 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 what's his name Dotsler Whitaker when Whitaker runs in and you know see Ah, so this is where he he went missing. He can't disappear into thin air. Dude must not have seen the second movie. Just yeah. 
Now, I, I would like to know how he knew that there would be a sewer access right there. Had not seen coming that that a Taken movie would have Kim get pregnant. That was interesting, and it was especially interesting because it barely factored into anything. That's it. That's it exactly. It's the this Taken movie's pointless you know, plot point. It's it's the the singing lessons from the pop star. You know, I was gonna say the the driving lessons, but actually the driving lessons did kind of play into the second movie. But yeah, and the the thing with you know worrying about the the kid and you know. Could she deal with it? It was almost funny when you know when she's asked like, "Well, I was wondering about a puppy," and, and he's like, eh, "You know, it's almost as bad as a kid." And it's, it's, yeah, that's a bit obvious, but yeah. And the but but yeah, it it really doesn't play into like. There's no like. Generations of mills, kind of thing going on. There's no like I have to protect my daughter and her, you know, unborn kids. It's just yeah, you could you could basically remove it and it would not really do much of anything, you know. And then yeah, then we have the the sweet scene there at the end where they presumably and apparently the same place where they got you know the the milkshakes i think they were at the end of yeah at the end of the second movie and uh, yeah now they're like you know, I, I i like to name her after mom i just i think that's sweet but you really want to keep the name lenore a lot? it's your kid it's your kid not not any of my business but yeah and there the the you know Jamie the the bland and perfect boyfriend who's actually slightly interesting in this one reappears having not at all been part of the film you know in in the entire yeah it it seems like i don't know maybe just Tell him just to be careful, just in case. Yeah. Now. I realize it was Stuart doing it, but I'm still impressed at just how bad the frame job was. Like, I mean, the moment, you know, Whitaker got the, you know, the bagels, I'm like, they're, they're hot, it's, it's a good bagel. I mean, right then, you're like, well, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty good okay it's it's you know i don't know i guess they would call it circumstantial it's 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 not a slam dunk but this would seem to indicate that brian did not in fact kill her and just yeah it's it's a real yeah it's it's not much of a I, I really, for all the things that the trailer promised that it didn't deliver on, I am pretty surprised that they gave away, you know, the the plane being stopped from taking off. Excuse me, like I was, you know, the moment that, excuse me, Stuart called and said, you know, get me the, the plane, I was like, well, I already saw how this went in the trailer. And it was like, yeah. And, you know, it's it's probably not a good idea to, at the end of your very milk toast, bland action movie, remind me of the opening of Face Off. Just, yeah, that's, 
and and you know when when he's going up the elevator they they pull speed on the on the security I just <laughs> we've seen these movies we 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 remember these movies it just you know I don't know I get maybe maybe they're being intentionally really obvious about it now I did like when 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 Brian is leaving the college, I think she, yeah, she was in college. Yeah. When, when he was leaving that, you know, he takes the grenade and kind of blindly throws it. I see where Kim gets it. I was very, very surprised by the, the nausea thing. Like I, when she first says it, I kind of thought that it was just an excuse and then I thought oh wait maybe it's like morning sickness and then we find out that he basically spiked her drink her yogurt thingy which at first I really thought she was shoplifting but I guess they yeah then then he seemed to know about it and he was like concerned or something so yeah but yeah apparently he gave her something to make her nauseous and then he gave her the antidote and then you know the the that one of the two quirky cop buddies is busting down the door and then she's sitting there and it's like from dusk till dawn are are you did did you just take all of these different movies, you know, and just take every classic action movie, put them all in a hat, pick out different ones, and then try to figure out how to reference them in in what just I don't know were you trying to trick us into thinking we were watching a better movie than we were? Now. When when I first saw the the star tattoo on the hand, was that supposed to be a reference? I'm like, right from the start, I was like, oh, they did the same as you know they. I mean, they did the same with the star as they did with the two romantic interests. They really obviously recast it. But then apparently it's just that these guys are all working for Matalov. I'm gonna go with Maclov. I'm pretty sure that's wrong, but yeah, it just and and let's talk about Maclov. Maclov is a badass. Why was he in it for so little? Why was he only given any backstory? Right? I mean, there's like 20 minutes of Maclov in a movie that should that could easily be had 50 minutes of Maclov. I mean, the fact that he turns out to not be the guy, you know, behind, you know, he he was tricked by Stewart as well. He should have been in way more of it. He should have just. I want to see the spin-off. I want to see like the the prequel where we see Makalov's, you know, extended backstory because that was, yeah, and that poor guy he deserves better than to be PG-13 to death which I'm, I'm pretty sure he was supposed to be dead when when Brian left him and they went over and he's like he's lying perfectly still I'm not even sure they said he's dead but he apparently he seemed to be dead and yeah I have no idea how how that happened and they killed Leland Orser I that's that's when you knew Stewart was you know real bad guy. Nobody killed. Yeah. I was I was also kind of confused by why the spy buddies did not you know join up as a, you know as, as Brian's backup team sooner than they did. They only seemed to like maybe halfway through the movie or so to show up and yeah it's. Seems like they could have maybe gone in his place for the, you know, checking the security camera footage. 
on that, why was he not actually, why was his face not over all of the media? It's like, he's a murder suspect, he just evaded several cops, we know he's got special forces training. Me, I I plaster his face all over the media. It's just, and and it's like you know the the cops show up. Did oh someone else just asked about her? Was it this guy? Yeah, just and that also seemed like you know and and Brian just kept staying there, pressing just to see a little bit more. It was just you know. He he's he's just he's gotten used to. I mean, people are letting him conduct entire phone calls at gunpoint. Just yeah, he's he's used to being, you know, to to getting to do these these kinds of things. Now, when during the funeral, this is always such a. I should feel bad for making jokes, but I don't. When the priest is like talking about, you know, he's he's I think he's talking about how the Bible talks about that there will be, you know, bad situations where you're like, you know, thinking that everything's bad. And he phrases it interesting. He's the Bible is constantly telling us, and I'm just like, is is this guy like? <laughs> he doesn't sound like he's very pro Bible. He sounds like he's very fed up with what the Bible is constantly just nag, nag, nag. Now, did I see it wrong, or did like? I'm pretty sure that there were a couple of times where Whitaker had like chess pieces and I get that this is like oh they're playing like a game and he's like just as clever and it never paid off never paid off I mean at least with the with the you know elastic band thing that turns out to be you know the one that has like the the case number kind of thing on it so it's like you know as long as he's got the elastic he's still on the case kind of thing now he also really didn't get very many like really definite like you know you want to have like this I just realized and you know do this or that over the range just there really wasn't anything it was just no oh, he's you know you think you've got him but you don't really and he talks to Brian some nothing very uninspired it's too bad. I mean, these are two great actors. Should be, they should be given a lot more to work with. Now, I was when they're talking to Stewart. You know, when 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 the whole gang has gotten together, when the spy buddies and Kim and Brian and Stewart are all together, and they're talking about how how to proceed. You know, you know, Stuart says something like, I, I want to help or something like that. And then one of the spy buddies says, you will, the way the bait attracts the shark. And it's like, I mean, you didn't really have to, the moment you say the word bait, you don't even have to, you know, mention any predator. It's just like, everyone knows what bait is. And then Stuart is like, bait? And it's like, okay. Are you unfamiliar with the concept of bait as in how to lure in predator animals in, in nature? Are you, are you unfamiliar with the concept of bait in action movies? Are, are you unsure as to what... What do you mean bait? Question mark. Yes, bait. It's, it's, it's a pretty well-established concept. Even, even in real life, even outside of action movie tropes, you just bait. Now the and this will of course have I don't want really to mention that it you know really 
awkwardly edits things down for PG-13. When when Stuart is like, you know, yelling at Brian, and you can really clearly, you know, it's one of those things where you can very clearly see the word he was actually saying. But in addition to that, he starts, like, he literally says, you were fa screwing her. And it's just like, how did you, how did you mess that up? How did you, wow, like, like, ADR is, is, ADR, please. Now, I suppose that, more, more, let's go. When, when they mentioned the OCD gene, I really thought that that, you know, with her also being pregnant, would actually lead to some, like, you know, oh no, what if my kid also, you know, you know, gets to be OCD or something. At, at least they did do a payoff on, you know, her picking the that exact, you know, yogurt or something. Although, again, Brian is so much weaker. Here he actually has to be told, you know, so this is the kind of thing where he should at least, this is the kind of thing he should have figured out by himself. Okay, yes, then we're going back into him being, you know, very creepy and overly attached to her, but at least <laughs> then for sure is Brian. Now... I want to give Lenore the benefit of the doubt, and certainly, I mean, she and Brian, no matter how much they wanted to, they, they definitely did try to make sure to resolve things between Lenore and Stuart before anything else, but she keeps using the word fantasizing. I, I'm just not sure the word means what she thinks it means. It sounds like what she's trying to say is, I miss us. Because when she's saying, I fantasize, maybe it's me, maybe it's my filthy, filthy mind, but to me, when, when someone says, I am fantasizing about you, it means sexually. It doesn't mean, like, I miss when we were together. I mean, I don't know if she and Stuart are you know, doing the, the yeah, are, are still on those terms. So I don't know if she literally means, when he is plowing me, I am thinking of you. But, <laughs> movie's just not giving me a lot else to, to, to want to give her the benefit of the doubt, but, yeah. Now, when Brian first comes by Kim's place and is like, you know, I, I thought I'd be a little less predictable, you know, and he brings in champagne and she doesn't have any, so she appears to be breaking the, you know, the, this is a family that is very comfortable with drinking early in the day, but Kim is not, which actually is probably also just responsible when, you know, given that she's pregnant. Although I did, you know, kind of expect Brian to like, you know, take the freaking panda, you know, it's, yeah. And I, I swear they so badly wanted that to be funny. It was not funny. Just, you know, I've got a big panda here. Well, if it's okay with you and the panda, just, I know what you're thinking, and don't say it. It's just not funny at all. I've read other parts of this franchise. The links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.